Billionaire Democratic candidate Michael Bloomberg is being hammered on social media following the unearthing of an old recording showing him defending the policy of stop and frisk. Take a look. They just keep saying, oh, it's a disproportionate percentage of a particular ethnic group. That may be, but it's not a disproportionate percentage of those who witnesses and victims describe as committing the murder. In that case, incidentally, I think we disproportionately stop whites too much and minorities too little. All right. So that recording, by the way, I said it was an old recording. It's actually back in 2013. It's just the Trump years have felt like it's been a decade. And so I guess old is relative, but nonetheless, that was back in 2013. Oh, no, white people, they're stopped too often. Minorities, mm, not stopped enough. In fact, uh, if it were up to me, uh, and it wasn't considered unconstitutional to stop and frisk people, I would stop and frisk everyone. Devastating. But... By far, not the worst of it. So there's actually more recordings. And, and this is uh, audio that was found online by progressive host Benjamin Dixon. So he gets a lot of credit for this. Um, and, and this audio was uh, audio that Bloomberg had tried to bury. It is actually from a February 6, 2015 event hosted by the Aspen Security Institute. So now the Aspen Security Institute invited Bloomberg to talk, uh, and then Bloomberg said, we're not going to release the actual recording of this. I don't want you to release this. Uh, and so once you uh, listen to this, you'll understand why. 95% of your murders and murderers and murder victims fit one of them. You can just take the description and Xerox it and pass it out to all the cops. They are male minorities, 15 to 21. That's true in New York, it's true in virtually every city. And that's where the real crime is. You've got to get the guns out of the hands of the people who get killed. So you've got to, if you want to spend the money, put a lot of cops in the street, put those cops where the crime is, which means in minority neighborhoods. So it's one of the unintended consequences is people say, oh my God, you are arresting kids for marijuana that are all minorities. Yes, that's true. Why? Because we put all the cops in the minority neighborhoods. Yes, that's true. Why we do it? Because that's where all the crime is. And the way you get the guns out of the kids' hands is uh, to throw them against the wall and prison. And then they start, they say, oh, I don't want that. I don't want to get caught. So they don't bring the gun. They still have a gun, but they leave it at home. So, wow. Uh, th look, that's disastrous, right? Uh, and here he is again, up to 2015. He finally apologized for stop and frisk right before he started running for election. Oh, oh, well, then everything's fine. All your past statements, including the ones from 2013, 2015, and all the other statements where you defended uh, stop and frisk, all that's completely forgiven because before you started to run your uh, campaign for president, you said. Oh, yeah, that stop and frisk thing that I loved and that I did, defended for, for years upon years didn't mean it. My bad, dog. Sorry about that. Please vote for me. D ridiculous. Does anybody actually believe that? If you do, i got a bridge to tell you. <laughs> but look, uh, now, as far as stop, stop and frisk actually goes, do you know how effective it was? Not at all effective. None. Uh, now, this is according to Professor John McDonald of University of Pennsylvania's criminal uh, criminology department. Uh, they said, or he said in a fact-checking blog, that all the evidence collected shows stop and frisk made no difference to crime rates. Uh, quote, NYPD's deployment of extra police to high crime neighborhoods contributed far more to the crime reduction than the use of stop, question, and frisk. Research on the NYPD's program of Operation Impact found that extra police deployed the high crime areas in New York was a major factor in the crime decline, a 12% uh, percent to 15% reduction. The additional use of stop, question, and frisk made almost no difference. The stops only had a detectable impact on crime when the stops were based on probable cause. And these kinds of stops were very rare. McDonald said saturating high crime neighborhoods with extra police helped reduce crime in New York, but the bulk of investigative stops 
did not play a meaningful role in crime reduction. And yet Bloomberg was like, oh, no, no, stop and frisk up until just recently. Stop and frisk works. Oh, it worked great. It worked great. And so, look, again, these are absolutely disastrous videos uh, and should be shared very widely. Uh, and again, thanks again to uh, Benjamin Dixon uh, for talking about this, for finding this and spreading this far and wide. Uh, now, the reaction on social media, of course, is very clear. Currently, uh, we have Bloomberg is a racist that is trending. And let me read you some of those tweets. A.W. Holnett says, terrible then and looks even worse now. Tons of people told him stop and frisk don't work, including, as I mentioned, experts in the field. Uh, used to intimidate, harass POC, mostly young men. Bloomberg didn't listen and only apologized at the start of his campaign. Bulldozed his way to the third term as mayor and refused to settle the Central Part 5 lawsuit. That is all information that is true, that is verified, and that is part of Bloomberg's record, which is disastrous. William Haney says, every police department in the nation says it would never racially profile. He's advocating exactly that. He believes that for the greater good, lawful minorities should be subject to greater police scrutiny, bodily frisking, and the use and abuse of state power. Hideous. Look, this guy has the temerity to run as a Democrat. No, this is this is authoritarian tactics. This is conservative authoritarian tactics. No, not cool at all. Mr. Green says, uh, or has a nickname, Stop and Friskberg. <laughs> I admit that is kind of good. Uh, Sean King, uh, who's an activist, of course, uh, says, if you live in New York or know our history, you've been knowing that Bloomberg is racist. He's awful. The world will soon know just how deep this man's bigotry goes. Another journalist, Frederick Joseph, says, Mike Bloomberg isn't much different than Donald Trump. He has a history of racism, and he's a wealthy white man who decided to buy the election. And that's another problem, of course, because he is, look, spending tens of millions of dollars at least on ad buys in different areas. He's blanketing uh, these ads everywhere. Uh, and that, of course, has bought him a lot of polling numbers. Uh, I think I read somewhere uh, a, a math breakdown that he spent about $29 million per, for each percentage point he's gone up in the polls. I, that's, what, that's what it equates to. The hyper-targeting and the uh, tens of millions of dollars spent equals now he's at 15% in the polls. That's disastrous. Uh, and now earlier, Quinnipiac University released their poll. Uh, this is yesterday, actually, showing that 22% of black voters now support Bloomberg. It, he has surpassed Bernie Sanders just in this one poll, by the way. Just in this one poll. Uh, and so I wouldn't get worried about nationally yet. But he's leapfrog Bernie Sanders in black support. How does that happen? When you have this kind of record, uh, Joe Biden still at 27% uh, and Bernie Sanders at 19%. Now, look, uh, on the Quinnipiac poll, to be fair, it's a really small sample size, about 625 people. But nonetheless, if, if this starts to translate into national uh, polling with African Americans, disastrous. And I don't see how this is even possible. How is it that somebody with such a racist past? And who only up until he started running for, for, for election embraced this past uh, and embraced these terrible, disastrous, not at all effective policies somehow got 22% Af uh, of African American support. I'm guessing probably MSNBC, probably uh, mainstream news for not really talking about that at all. And so hopefully now, with independent media talking about this, people will start to hear the truth about Bloomberg and what he really stands for. Uh, and hopefully as well, if he's in the Nevada debate, that he gets asked about this. Because it's really important because he needs to be challenged on his history and have his record exposed for everyone to see. Because this should not go. Mainstream media is obviously failing us. They're, they're not... They're not showing him. Uh, they're not showing his real record. Uh, because, look, and this is who he is. 
he can't deny it. And so someone, again, has to point that out. And I guess it's up to us. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYTNation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.